One of the great things about working at the University of Melbourne is that we get to live in the city of Melbourne, which is one of the most livable and interesting cities in the world. The university itself is a large one, more than 40,000 undergraduates, significant numbers of, of graduate students as well. Our research is rather broadly based. We cover most of the major discipline areas within physics, as well as engaging in innovative cross-disciplinary work in areas such as biophysics and material science. We specialize in astrophysics and cosmology, astroparticle physics, optical physics of various kinds, experimental and theoretical condensed matter physics, and experimental and theoretical particle physics. A very exciting development for us in 2014 was the appointment of an endowed chair, the Thomas Baker Chair of Physical Biosciences. This represents a solid commitment to developing a cross-disciplinary program in physical biosciences involving physicists, biologists, engineers, biomedical scientists. The aim of it is to use physics techniques to understand things about biology that could not be understood in any other way. Our theoreticians are also involved in using quantum mechanics in novel ways for quantum computing and also for quantum communication. Researchers from both condensed matter groups are actually part of the Centre of Excellence for Quantum Computation and Communication Technology. And this centre is spread across Australia over six university campuses. Our focus here is to build a quantum computer based on silicon. So the encoding that we use is phosphorus atoms in the silicon lattice. So on the experimental side, we focus on the implantation of phosphorus atoms into silicon, and this is a critical step in the pathway for fabrication. And on the theoretical side, we look at performing multi-million atom simulations of devices that are measured in the experiments, all the way up to understanding how to design such a quantum computer, given that it will comprise many millions of qubits. Bionic Vision Australia is a collaboration between eight institutions, including universities, medical institutes and hospitals, who are working together to develop a bionic eye for the world after the success of the cochlear implant which originated here in Australia at the University of Melbourne. In this lab, we can grow both electrically conducting and electrically insulating diamond in our chemical vapour deposition system. And so by combination of steps, we can make very sophisticated 3D structures in diamond with conducting channels that are entirely fused to the insulating material. This is one of the major advantages of using diamond to make stimulating electrodes, that the electrode array is completely leak-proof, even though it has hundreds or thousands of electrical channels. It acts as a monolithic diamond barrier for the purposes of moisture and a shower head for the purposes of electricity. Particle physics research at Melbourne, both experimental and theoretical, is about examining whether or not the standard model of particle physics is really true. We do this by doing precision tests of the standard model and we're also searching for new physics. So the theoreticians speculate, for example, about what the dark matter of the universe might consist of and our experimentalists are involved in trying to test these theories. My experimental research consists in looking for fundamental particles and fundamental forces. In Melbourne, we have international collaboration with a lot of different institutes, and we also have a center of excellency called COEP, the Center for Excellency for Physics at the Terra Scale. This is focused on the ATLAS experiment at CERN. This ATLAS experiment works on the Large Hadron Collider, and we analyze the data to study fundamental particles like Higgs. The team here in Melbourne was also part of the Higgs discovery and also students like master students were part of it. We have also another experiment that we are building some apparatus for. This is the Bell 2 experiment in Japan, KK. And there we also have students involved in the construction of the experiment. And then we have another experiment that we are thinking to do in Stoll in Victoria in a mine to catch dark matter. The Astrophysics Group is a member of several large international projects. On the cosmology side, the Murchison Wide Field Array. This is a low frequency radio telescope which is built in Western Australia. The main science goal in that program is the birth of the first stars. 
and the epoch of reionization. So to measure the radio emission from the gas in between and around the first stars, the interstellar gas. We lead the development of the calibration and signal processing pipelines uh, for the epoch of reionization experiment uh, with the MWA. And we also support that with a really quite diverse and extensive set of theoretical modeling. The group is a member of the laser interferometer gravitational wave observatory. So LIGO's goal is to detect for the first time the elusive gravitational waves that Einstein predicted in 1916. And once detected, those waves will you know, provide a marvelous new tool for studying the universe and some of the most extreme environments within it, like neutron stars and, and black holes. My research program is in the area of nano-optics, which can be thought of as the intersection between optics and nanotechnology. We fabricate nanostructures that can concentrate light to spots that are far smaller than the wavelength. And that enables us to do spectroscopy of single molecules. It also enables us to use the forces exerted by light to trap and manipulate micro and nanoparticles. Another example of what we do is that we develop nanostructures where we can control the absorption spectrum. These have favorable properties that can be used in photodetector devices. One of the areas of research in the theoretical condensed matter group is the use of electron sources to characterise the properties of crystal structures. The research on ultra-cold quantum gases has really been pioneered by the recent advances in experimental techniques, where it's now possible to cool collections of atoms to a million times colder than interstellar space. This enables experimentalists to build quantum systems piece by piece controlling the interactions and the environment in which those atoms sit. This then provides a platform to design and construct new materials. My focus has really been on what happens when you have long-range dipolar interactions in these systems and how they affect the stability of these gases, hence the bulk properties of these gases. We envisage a very bright future for the School of Physics. We're in a growth phase at the moment. Uh, we're going to maintain our strong involvement in all of the disciplines. We're going to move with the times. Whatever important research problems crop up, you can be assured that we will be playing a strong role. We'll also continue to develop our cross-disciplinary efforts, forging new relationships with biologists, engineers, biomedical scientists and the like.